such a selfish portrait Using various shades Of gray to green And other choices Right down to The finest detail Of the brooding shadows That seem to call Out your name Speaks to you About me you can reach out and touch me Speaks to you about me You can almost reach out and touch me now Your selfless love Gets wasted on This child subject With plastic skin and One single stroke of utter genius, then none of this would I seem to shame. Speaks to you about me, you can reach out and touch me. Speaks to you about me, you can almost reach out and touch me now. You can reach out and touch me Speaks to you about me Don't hang yourself on me Don't you hang yourself up on me Don't you hang yourself James Clark, um, thanks for coming on the show. We do not actually know each other. No. Um, and that's totally cool, but you're actually the first guest that I've had on the show since I started doing guests who isn't a personal friend. So this is a first for me. So uh, okay. usually usually the segment is called, What Are You At? And it started with me like calling an old friend on the phone and just saying, What Are You At? And that's a Newfoundland <laughs> term. Um, I'm from Newfoundland. So, um, and we'd chat for a bit and then it turned into me doing that to some other people and then people that I knew. And anyways, it's evolved to the point now where our, our common- Don't let anybody on the show. We'll let anybody on the show. Um, Cam Carpenter, who's a, a common friend of ours, um, had uh, introduced me to your music a while back. And I knew that you were working with Mo uh, Berg, who's also been on the show. And uh, Mo is, um, I've known Mo for a long time. And uh, it made sense to uh, to give this a whirl. Yeah, well, um, so it's lovely to, to meet you. Lovely it's to meet you. Lovely to meet you. And maybe, uh, maybe after this, we'll be personal friends. Exactly. That's, that's kind of the exciting thing that I'm hoping for. <laughs> right. Me too. Me too. Um, the James Clark Institute um, is a, um, it's a new act to me. Um, so I'm, I'm just sort of catching up with you. Um, you've done a lot of work in the last year, um, putting out a lot of singles and videos for them. Um, amazing content creation on your part, you and the band. Thank you very much. It has been a busy year for us. Yes. I'm sure it has. Um, the um, the one thing I wanted to ask you about is the uh, the name, because um, uh, I went to the Clark Institute in the 90s um, for, a, for a week of testing to try and figure out why I was having issues with some things. And, uh, and when I saw the name of the band, I went to the James Clark Institute, and I went, 
Okay, that's the first thing I got to find out. Um, is there any relation? Um, like, a um, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, it's great to, to talk to someone who actually knows of the Clark Institute because uh, as time goes on, fewer people know about it. You know, all the time. Um, <clears throat> because you know, as you probably know, the Clark Institute, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> merged with uh, I guess is now Cam H. Um, yeah. but, uh, when I was first starting to uh, write my own music and start to think about recording it, I did not want to release it under my own name. There's a gazillion James Clarks in the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I needed something to, uh, I thought a little catchier or anyways, it was, it's all very tongue in cheek. Um, mm -hmm. I was, um, you know, I'm very familiar with the Clark Institute myself. Uh, so, uh, I just thought, oh, this is kind of a, a perfect name because a lot of my songs uh, back to then actually still still to this day are, are very uh, personal and come from personal experiences. And so I thought my songwriting has always been my own therapy. Yeah. So I thought, you know, I'm going to go with this name. I think it's a perfect name for what I do. So. Well, when I when I saw the full name for the first time, I, I, it just kind of hit me and I went, Okay, I think I get this guy right away, and you know, not listen to your tunes, and it's like, yeah, okay, I can totally, I can totally relate, and um, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, you know, you never want to assume, but uh, I thought there's got to be a story behind that. So uh, well, uh, you're right, there is very interesting. Um, how is it working with Mo Berg as a producer? Are you enjoying that experience? And this is your second time working with him, right? Um, I've worked with him, worked with him for ten years now. So we've done, uh, we've done two albums together and the single is past single in the summer. And tomorrow we actually begin recording the, the new album, the next album. That's so, fantastic. So yes, I really enjoy working with Mo. He's, uh, he's a great guy. And yeah. He's, um, he gets where I'm coming from. I think he understands what I'm trying to do. So, um, yeah, it's great. It's an important relationship with a producer and an artist, you know, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you know uh, Mo before from Pursuit of Happiness? Was that how you got to know him? Or uh... well, I was a big fan. Yeah. Uh, even before they had their record deal, I was going to see them in clubs and <laughs> checking them out all the time. And so I was always a big fan. And then uh, probably um, many, well, I don't know how many years ago now, 15 years ago or something like that, I was, I was playing drums in a, in a surf band in Toronto. And uh, the guitar player knew Mo. I'm not sure what the connection was, but they were friends or acquaintances. And so Mo was asked to produce our second album. And um, we had some meetings with him. Unfortunately, it, it didn't happen. But uh, I, I, I would keep in touch with Mo. And every time I'd run to him, I seemed to have like a, a new CD out. So I would give him a copy and say, hey, Mo, you know, let me know what you think of this. And, and we always talked about uh, working together at some point. And uh, yeah, probably about 10 years ago, um, it actually happened. So yeah, it was great. That's very cool. And you've had a busy summer. Um, it's, it, uh, it seems like this year has been like extremely busy for you. I guess it's probably the year after COVID ended. Maybe that's the reason, but uh, you seem to be doing to, a lot of stuff. Trying to catch up on lost time for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, the last album, the, the latest album, The Color of Happy, we were, um, we had one, yeah, one last uh, session, recording session booked uh, when COVID shut everything down. And so uh, we were behind, that put us behind about six months or so before we could actually get back into the studio to just finish off the sessions. And so, um, yeah, so now I'm just trying to just keep the momentum going. And I've got a great bunch of guys now that, in the band that I'm playing with. And You got the same crew that's in most of the videos on your website and stuff? Um, for the last few videos, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems like there's a consistency there in one group of videos with uh, with a bunch of members. Yeah, my keyboard player has actually been with me almost since day one, but um, everyone else is fairly new in the last couple of years. And when was day one for you? Um, like when did this become your focus, or is this an always thing? It's um, it's always been a sort of a part time thing, and you know, I was uh, I started out as a drummer, so I was always drumming in different bands, and it, but been writing songs on the side, and and you know recording some stuff. Um, and I was sort of it was always like back and forth on it. But uh, two thousand and four, I put out the first uh, official mm -hmm. Clark Institute release. Yeah, so it's what's that? Uh, for the, almost twenty years. Wow, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, yes, when you said 2004, I thought, well, that wasn't too long ago. And then, 
then when you do the math, it actually was a while ago. Yep. Yep. Sneaks up on you, man. That time thing. Yeah. I, I kind of, um, that was about when I sort of disappeared into, uh, out of the commercial industry and out of the industry, mostly together, aside from just singer songwriter stuff. And, uh, uh -huh. I, I know, um, I miss so much coming out of Toronto in the last 20 years. Um, it's, uh, it's something I, I hope to get back to, uh, discovering the scene down there. I got a lot of friends that are currently, you know, sort of down cutting their teeth and, and, you know, like, um, one of my buddies is, you know, living above the, uh, the Cameron house and, you know, playing oh. there, you know, yeah, yeah. five nights a week, you know, it's just like, they're doing that thing that, you know, I remember doing when I was 22. So it's, um, um who's your buddy above the camera? Th that's, um, uh, he plays with Dave Mowat. Um, he's a guitar player and his name is totally eluding me right now, oh, oh, uh, but it'll come back to me in a second. I'll blurt it out. Right. right. Um, but, um, um, he's a great guy. Um, but yeah, last time I was up, he was talking to me. We played a show together. He was telling me about living above the Cameron house and, you know, he plays with almost everybody that comes through there. You know, he's one of the, one of the guitar player, exceptional guys. Right, cool. And, uh, just, uh, and Mike T. Kerr is another guy who's down there. I don't know if you know Mike. Um, I don't think I do, no. He plays a lot of kind of, uh, he's, he gets really sort of, really great sort of technical Western swing, old style guitar playing, just beautiful, oh. beautiful stuff. I love that stuff. Love uh, that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's great to watch those people. They're real, um, um, they have a, a different sort of emotion towards music than, um, than my pop sensibilities. Uh, enjoy as well so it mm. fulfills a different part of my musical um uh, thirst you know yeah i get it for sure for sure i mean my musical tastes run uh just rampant in every direction so <coughs> exactly yeah yeah um I, I i was listening through your music i'm hearing um a, a lot of uh, i guess the the term power pop is is probably you know the the generalized term that covers everything from elvis costello to sloan um yeah. and i hear so much of all of that in your stuff you know i hear a little bit of television poking out here and there and um i hear some of the matthew sweet sensibilities from when he did like the um the ron the nelly records um uh -huh. who 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 are your influences and and and, and what do you draw from well, uh, all of the artists that you just mentioned, uh, I'm a big fan of all of them. Uh, but so, yeah, I mean, I was labeled with that power pop thing. Uh, my second last album, I guess someone, I guess my publicist at the time uh, mentioned it from first, I don't know, well, that's the first time someone's put me in, in that uh, genre. And I, thought, I, I guess that fits. Yeah. Mm. You know, more than anything else, I guess it's power pop. But yeah. Uh, mm. Mm. Yeah, so I'm I'm a big fan of that genre, although my my issue, my one issue with that genre would be that, um, and I'm generalizing here, but mm -hmm. I find a lot of artists in that genre um, aren't the best lyricists, sometimes. <laughs> and um, I'm I'm you know I'm lyrics are really important to me, and um, so sometimes I. I, I get a little bit disappointed with some of the power pop stuff, but and I'm just generalizing. Not everybody, but you know. I, I, I totally hear you, um, and I, and I understand where you're coming from. Your lyrics definitely come from a deeper well um, than um, than a lot. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of the artists I listen to are narrative storytelling artists. You know, and I mean, mm -hmm. they sing a six minute song, and it's it's just like reading a small book. You know, like it's just, every word is so important. Um, and then there's some of my other favorite artists who, you know, I mean, some of my favorite punk rock bands, you know, they've, they've got two lines in a song and it's still a great three minute song. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, but I see what you're saying about that. And I think when I say power pop, that was why I mentioned the artists I did like Costello, uh, Sloan, uh, Matthew Sweet, and I can't remember, oh, television. Um, even though television's lyrics are a little obscure and, and, and not particularly deep, they have, a, they have a different thing, uh, a different type of depth. Um, but yeah, I love, I love a great songwriter. And if you put a great songwriter with a, a great power pop band, um, uh, and the power pop thing, I, I always, I always get weirded out when I hear the word pop because it seems so commercial and it's it, so many great power pop bands are the farthest thing from commercial music, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so getting back to your uh, previous question about who are my favorite artists, uh, or however you worded that, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, I'm a huge Casella fan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, lyric, mostly because of the lyrics. Um, I was a huge uh, Ray Davis fan, uh, 
from the, from the Kinks. Mm -hmm. He was one of my first real influences for um, trying to write songs. Uh, there's just something about his his stuff that just hit me pretty deep. So uh, yeah, uh, so I'm still a huge fan of him. Um, who else would there be? Um, I mean, of course, Beatles. Yeah, number one. Number one. Uh, so, I mean, I really grew up in that whole era of, uh, I mean, I was a tiny kid in the 60s, but um, that stuff just influenced me for years and years and years. And, and I heard recently somebody say about, uh, um, what is it? It's when you're about the age of 12, what you listen to at the age of 12 sticks with you for the rest of your life. And, <laughs> uh, and I, I think that's absolutely true, at least, you know, with you. Yeah. yeah. I found the years between 12 and 15, they were sort of the formative years of music for me. Anything I listened to and had an emotional attachment to that I can put on today, I still do. Yeah. My record yeah. collection is the same now as it was back then, you know, with a, a bunch of additions. Yeah, 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 me too. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, yeah, you mentioned uh, the Kinks, uh, Ray Davies. Um, I... Um, a few years ago at a Christmas, I was doing, I was doing a Christmas thing and I was thinking, trying to find the right Christmas song for me to do. And, wow. and then it sort of came to me like, I'm going to do Father Christmas. It's, it's sort of, it's my, it's a perfect Christmas song for, yeah. for sort of a lot of the way that I feel. And today I saw that you guys did that on, uh, you guys did a video for it. You did a great job. I really, really quite Thanks. enjoyed that. Thanks. That was, I think that was during COVID we did that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great song. It's, yeah. Uh, great song. You guys did a bang up job of it. Um, Thanks. Uh, if it's okay with you, maybe I can get a copy of the video and I'll put it on the show for people to see um, when sure. we are. I will send that to you. Yes. That'd be awesome. It's, it's um, uh, getting to be that um, time of the season. So, it is getting to be. Yeah. It is getting to be. I posted my first Christmas song today. <laughs> okay. Great. It's December 1st. I said, here you go, folks. <laughs> it's time. <Yeah>. Yep. <laughs> what do you got going on over the season? You busy with the with the band or are you home with family or what's your uh, what's your plan? A couple shows. Uh, one's a, <clears throat> it's a solo show. Actually, I think my guitar player is going to join me on it. Um, there's a great little, great little place in here in Toronto in, in Parkdale on uh, Queen West, and uh, it's, it's called Tonight. And it's just this great little little vibey bar. It's hmm. you know probably holds about I don't know forty people maybe. You know, is it a newer newer venue, a newer newer bar? I should say they they opened up probably I think six months before COVID hit. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and he hung in. He hung in. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, so I play there maybe once or twice a year, and, and so I'm doing that. Doing that next uh, next Saturday. Yeah, we're there. Very so, cool. And then we're playing a show out in Oshawa, middle of December, and then that's it. I'm just going to uh, lay low and and then uh, focus on on the new record. Yeah. How far into it are you, and when do you expect it to come out? We start the sessions tomorrow morning, and uh, Mo. Uh, Mo would like to have all of the, the recording done by the end of January. Excellent. Yeah. We'll see if we can hit that bullseye. You, you're putting a full band into the studio, sort of mostly, um, you know, at least the beds being live tracked, or is a lot of people working remotely, or how's that happening? No, we're all in the studio tomorrow. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so envious. <laughs> that sounds like a wonderful thing. Yeah. It's yeah, it's going to be fun, for sure. And uh, for a release date, what are you hoping for on this one? Well, <clears throat> it's uh, strange. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. If I want to go the vinyl route, which I do, which we did for the last one. Yep. There's such a, a bad log, backlog now for, for pressing vinyl. Um, so who knows? I mean, yeah. I, but I, you know, ideally, maybe realistically, next fall, possibly yeah. before that, if I just uh, go ahead and release it digitally or on CD. You know, yeah. Before the vinyl. It it's amazing how far, I mean, especially if you're doing the vinyl release, which a lot of us are doing now, you're it's so far ahead. I'm just, I'm about halfway through recording my record too. And it's just yeah. like, okay, so like, what does this mean? Like, this doesn't mean spring release anymore. No, I, you know? Know. I know. Yeah. So yeah, September recording used to mean spring release, you know, and now it's just, um, it's, 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 it seemed by the time you get finished the, rec the record and when it comes out, it's, it's, it's such ancient history. Yeah. It's old. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you want to start working on the new one. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're doing some singles in the meantime um, and uh, putting out some stuff, um, I'll post all of your socials and stuff on this as well, and um, right. hopefully some people will check you out. Um, I'd love to get an acoustic song or two from you. Um, one would be fine. Two would be fantastic. 
Excellent. And thank you for uh, for taking the time to uh, to meet me and yeah, to meet yeah. the people that I hang out with on Wednesday night here on the show. Yeah, um, it's been it's been lovely talking to you. And um, you know, you're you're now in my list of people I know, and I have an idea about what you do. So I'll give you the invitation. You ever need anything, you reach out to me and stay in touch in the meantime. And you know, hopefully we'll get to have a drink someday. That would be wonderful. Yeah, be thank very you. cool. Thanks, James Clark from the James Clark Institute, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming on the show, mate. Thanks, Ken. Cheers. Thanks. Should I tell her what goes on inside of my head? I know I owe her an explanation for the contradictions I've said. Sending her the missing clues before she becomes a misled. Should I tell her what goes on inside of my head? I try to keep my demons at an arm's length. Sometimes I don't even know their own strength. Factoring in the factors, working out the kinks. A mind is a mind of its own, I think. My mind is a mind of its own, I think. Should I tell her what goes on inside of my head? I know I owe her an explanation for the contradictions I've said. Sending her the missing clues before she becomes a misled. Should I tell her what goes on inside of my head? Sitting on the fence with my predicament Thinking about where my tenacity went Backbone, I like bone, I'm all out of sync My mind is a mind of its own, I think My mind is a mind of its own, I think should I tell her? I like to break this mold that I've bent. Drop myself down, start all over. Should I tell her what goes on inside of my head? I know I owe her an explanation for those contradictions I've said. I'm sending her the missing clues before I send her around the bed. Should I tell her what goes on inside of my Should I tell her what goes on inside of my Should I tell her what goes on inside of my head?